I think that one of the problems in the criminal justice system is the fact that you know, over the years we have released people without really following them after they've been released or to provide them with a program in which they're going to participate in, which is going to be individualized for their own particular needs after being released. So without that, I think that you're, you're going to get a lot of people going back into the same environment from which they came, repeating the same activities that they've had participated in the past and eventually uh, reoffending and coming back to us. One of the problems that we were able to identify working with men while they're here is that although we could set them up for services here, we were not in a position to set them up for services after they had been released. So communicating with aftercare providers was really a problem that we identified early on that we needed to address. When you send someone out in the community after incarceration, they need a support system. We have a treatment philosophy here that really comes directly from the sheriff, which is that um, people come here as punishment and not for punishment, and our role is Re-entry. Our role is to help people become as able-bodied and capable as possible by the time they leave here to be able to transition back to the community and live productive, healthy, pro-social lives. What we really truly believe is that it's not very productive to release people back into an environment in which they have failed in the past. What we would like to do is to provide them in a very healthy, wholesome environment where they can, in fact, uh, live a uh, productive uh, existence and crime-free. In what's referred to as the round table, on the first Tuesday of each month, people from all these various disciplines in the criminal justice system, as well as many people in the community, particularly in the human service areas, uh, come together and, and identify those people who are being released in the next month. And as we go down the list, do you have any information about the men and their release plans? Um, or if you see uh, if there's any different information, please feel free to um, uh, join in. And we really encourage. We also to have to provide uh, information in terms of what are the programs in the community that the that are accessible to the. Uh, inmate when they leave the institution that will give them support in the community. My name is Wanda Rallone and I'm director of the Hampshire County Resource Center and I work in collaboration with the shelters with Daniel D. Berry and we work with the individuals coming out of the jail to continue the case management, any work that's already been done and that we continue that process with them with the ultimate goal to house them. And we also work with Margie Westwell, who is our reintegration manager from ServiceNet and at the round table. I've been in touch with Daniel around that, so hopefully his stay at Grove Street would be short yeah. until there is a, a bed at Beacon House. He also has applied to Spectrum. And she meets with us once a week at our meetings um, to continue the process on working with them. There are conversations that happen, you know, two months prior to release. So there's there's already this, we talked about this working relationship going on because of the round table, because of that connection. If we knew you worked with someone when they leave here, we wanted to start to work with you before he or she left here. And in this way, we can enable the people who are leaving here to leave on the best possible footing and doesn't that enhance public safety? You know, the better they do, the safer our communities are. One of the best things about the Reentry Roundtable is that it fosters collaboration among all the different parts of law enforcement. As prosecutors, we are involved on the front end of all this process by prosecuting defendants and recommending that they serve time in the House of Correction. So for the first time I was seeing what happened to the person while they were in the House of Correction. And in the round table, they discuss how the inmate did, what programs they took, what progress they made, sometimes also the fact that the inmate did not seem to be becoming any 
more aware of some of their problems and we're not taking advantage of the programs. And this is valuable information for prosecutors to use. He doesn't have a lot of time on parole. And I guess it will be up to the program as well to take him in on parole if he's that short. You know, because the likelihood is once he wraps up parole, he can leave the program. I'm Therese O'Brien. I'm the Institutional Parole Officer. And my role at the round table is to provide information regarding parole board votes, sometimes clarify parole board votes. Because of the round table, I've collaborated with Jamie Parent, who is an assistant district attorney. She's in charge of reviewing all the sexually dangerous uh, petitions that we send her. You know, I felt sometimes when we sent the letters out to the district attorneys, they went into a black hole. and. We didn't know who they went to, and it would be months before we heard we could hear anything. But now, um, you know, at the round table once a month, we get an update. If she hasn't, um, if we talk about someone who we're waiting for and she it's not familiar to her, she'll call me and give me an update on that person. One collaboration that I think everyone benefits from is with someone like Sergeant McMahon from the Northampton Police Department. She is charged with. Uh, keeping track of the sex offenders in Northampton. So once the roundtable is completed, I'll take that information and uh, come back to Northampton Police where I'll share that information with the officers here, uh, especially those offenders who we think are at high risk to reoffend, and let them know that they're back out, where they may be staying, certain contacts that they may be with, um, and you know, make sure that the officers are aware that these people are back out and there is a potential that sometimes they do come back out and reoffend. For the Amherst Police Department it's valuable for us to be sitting around that table with the probation department and when probation shares some of the uh, for instance uh, restrictions that um, somebody's going to have after their release uh, that's very valuable to us uh, so that therefore we can keep an eye out for what's going on with that individual if they're not supposed to be consuming alcohol or be out after uh, curfew and so forth that's something we can report directly to them um, otherwise we may not know that information there's no conduit in place currently for that information to be shared to the extent that we um, become involved throughout the entire process and I'm talking about probation officers um, the greater the likelihood that um, there's going to be success once the offender comes out of jail. So um, this round table I think has impressed upon me as a chief probation officer that we need to uh, not think of incarceration as a period of time when we're not involved at all and that uh, the correctional uh, professionals uh, need to do their job, that it is a continuing relationship that probation should have uh, with the House of Correction and that the reentry process should start immediately upon the uh, offender receiving uh, that period of incarceration. One of the important connections that we've made because of this roundtable is that we've begun to collaborate with Soldier On, the veterans program that is represented at these roundtables. There are many veterans some veterans that come through the criminal justice system and we have now become aware in the district attorney's office that there are special programs that will help these veterans and I think we owe that to them after the service they've done for our country so that we now have a, a program that identifies veterans refers them to soldier on programs and helps them. I work for a place called soldier on who serves homeless veterans the biggest benefit of being a part of the round table and being able to interact with the people that are there is being able to identify the veterans who might need our services while they're still in jail and then also we're able to follow up and let people know how they're doing afterwards. And some of the staff who work here at the jail are actually employed by some of these outside agencies. I'm the uh, forensic coordinator here at the Hampshire Sheriff's Office. I work for ServiceNet which is the mental health provider um, here in Hampshire County and I am subcontract through the jail to work here as a um, mental health provider. My responsibilities here um, at the round table is to provide basically a, a, a continuum of care for inmates who are transitioning back into the community, um, working toward uh, um, their areas of 
need, which includes substance abuse, mental health treatment, uh, medication monitoring, and um, oftentimes uh, uh, therapy. They begin to work with individuals while they are incarcerated and provide a natural link, really, to the services that individuals can avail themselves when they leave because they've already been introduced to ServiceNet. They've been introduced to the re-entry process. They may have even met who an individual clinician may be for them at one of these agencies when they leave, and they may have already started to work with them prior to leaving as well. So we have a number of services that are provided internally that are replicated when people leave. Hi, I'm Carl Signoni. I'm a reintegration manager here at the Hampshire House of Correction. I work with the inmates to prepare their release plans and also to help them make connections in the community to increase the likelihood that they'll do well after their release. Monthly roundtables follow a fairly set agenda. After introductions, we go over the release plans for the men getting out in the next two months and then the men paroling and then um, during that again we're open for any discussion about the men or any information anybody has once that's done we just ask for updates from um, the community providers and law enforcement at the table about kind of what's going on in their service or in their area uh, we've recently uh, <coughs> cleared out all those serial car breaks and uh, house beanies that I talked about last month uh, two individuals were arrested, one was out of Springfield and one was a local kid. I think you have them both here actually. Um, and the Interfaith Winter Shelter opens, will be open by the next meeting, so um, November 1st, 20 beds. Soon, a couple weeks after that, we have our overflow in East Hampton, which is another six beds. So, 26 beds coming down the line. We are just helping him getting food stamp application, that's what he wanted. But uh, if you have information about him, um, I would appreciate how to approach him in particular. Okay. Well, I mean, I, Tim talked about that last Friday. I think he's in the process of uh, returning back to Hampshire County to finish his sentence here. I think that might be happening this week. I think or soon, anyway. Uh, Northampton's been uh, somewhat busy. Uh, we had a, a rash of car B&Es. I know uh, Amherst has had a number as well. A lot of larcenies going on, um, mostly businesses. A lot of domestic assaults as well. Uh, and I know our anti-crime task force and working with the DA's office has been uh, pretty successful lately in some rather large um, drug uh, operations that have gone on and uh, concerning heroin. Uh, I guess from the probate side, the civil side, um, and you can see two people listed on the list are from Hampshire probate. Mm -hmm. Although they're being sentenced here for non-payment of child support and contempt, really the underlying issue is, is kind of a, a big increase in uh, substance and alcohol abuse. We're seeing a really wide range of people, um, Judge Phoenix, taking it very seriously. And unfortunately, that's why you have more people coming from Hampshire probate coming up here now than we have in the past. We are just part of a large continuum across the state, really across the country, of organizations, including sheriff's departments, who are focusing on reentry. Uh, we all do it a little bit differently. We have a reentry roundtable that includes probation parole, the police departments. However, we also include uh, the Amherst Community Center. We include community providers because we are a small facility. So there are some of the things that large places can do that would make no sense for us. However, we decided let's identify the things that as a small county, as a small community, we can do and let's focus on our strengths as opposed to trying to focus on something that we couldn't possibly emulate that perhaps a larger place could. This whole process is, it, no, one has a, no one has a monopoly on it. That, uh, it, it, has, it, it takes all segments of the community to make it work. And the greatest thing about the round table is the fact that it brings people together so that, that no one, no one segment of the criminal justice field or no one segment of the community 
takes the total responsibility. Everybody has an investment in the process. And by having that investment in the process, they participate and it, the round table gives them an opportunity to face-to-face -to -face communicate with one another in the best interest of the people that are being released.